to welcome you all. First of all, I would like to greet you all of you here in, in behalf of our organization. And also, I would like to thank uh, Embassy of the United States of America, USAID, uh, for organization of this event. So today's event, we will have guest, uh, Mr. Ambassador Wissenberger participates in uh, today's uh, event and he would like to uh, greet co conference participants. Let me to give the floor to Mr. Am Ambassador. Please, Mr. Ambassador. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, yes. The answer to the question posed by this conference is yes. It is time to remove the prohibitions on forbidden professions for women. I want to thank USAID and its partner, Entrepreneurship Development Foundation, for organizing this conference. I also want to offer special thanks to Dr. Sabit Begirov. You know, I read an impressive fact recently. According to the McKinsey Global Institute, women's equality in the workplace could add as much as $28 trillion to global annual gross domestic product by the year 2025. Here in Azerbaijan, reaching complete equality in the workplace would add $27 billion to Azerbaijan's gross domestic product. That's significant, a significant boost to the economy and prosperity here. As all of you here are very well aware, globally, Women are underrepresented in the workforce. Many women are discouraged or even prevented from receiving an education. They're less likely to become entrepreneurs and start businesses. They are constrained from achieving the highest leadership positions in the private sector and also in government. There's a much better alternative. When women are empowered, and have an equal seat at the table, the results are astonishing. When more women work, economies grow. Women's economic empowerment boosts productivity, increases economic diversification, and promotes income equality. Here in Azerbaijan, the US government has helped hundreds of Azerbaijani women gain new skills, start their own businesses, and improve their families' livelihoods through projects like this one, implemented by the Entrepreneurship Development Foundation. We have also seen that when women lead, companies thrive. There is substantial evidence that gender diversity at the management level enhances a company's performance. Female leaders help foster a culture of innovation and diversity, which leads to better decisions and increased revenue it actually affects the profit margin in companies. Now, prohibiting certain professions for women limits their potential to contribute to Azerbaijan's economy. Forbidden jobs for women means fewer jobs for women. Technological advances and increased safety standards have made jobs safer and less physically demanding for both men and women. Physically and professionally qualified candidates should have equal access to these jobs regardless of their gender. There cannot be equality for women in the workforce if women are not, are not allowed to work in certain jobs. As Secretary of State Pompeo said earlier this month, the United States recognizes that societies that empower women economically and politically are more stable and more peaceful. Now, the U.S. government's projects in Azerbaijan support the Azerbaijani government's priorities, and we are focusing on expanding economic opportunities for women to achieve equality because we believe in the stable, peaceful, and prosperous future that Azerbaijanis want for themselves and their country. I want to thank you for your collective efforts to address the issue of forbidden professions and for the steps you're all taking to increase gender equality and employment across all sectors in Azerbaijan. And the best way to do this is to eliminate all forbidden jobs for women. My colleague Jay Singh, the USAID mission director, will be representing the US Embassy on today's first panel discussion. He looks forward to responding to your questions and comments, and I want to wish all of you a productive conference and continued success 
and your endeavors on this extremely important issue. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador, for your nice words for the conference. In the meantime, I would like to take opportunity to thank uh, all stakeholders, uh, United States, USAID, and U.S. government for supporting this conference. Ladies and gentlemen, as you see from the agenda, chairman of our conference uh, will be Mr. Wahid Ahmadov, our esteemed parliamentarian. So I would like to give the floor to uh, Mr. Wahid Ahmadov. The issue of this conference is the prohibition of some professions for the women. Of course, I am supporting to decrease this list, but it is not good uh, complete elimination uh, by different stakeholders. From, for us, the woman, from, from, first of all, is a, a mother, and the mother cannot work in heavy conditions. She cannot work in uh, poisoning, uh, poisoning workplaces. We should give a birth to uh, healthy children. So we should take, uh, we should consider all this issue. But I am ready that we we should create a working group. Uh, uh, this working group should have people from different stakeholders, uh, from the Minister of Labour, uh, uh, women committees, and also other stakeholders. So first of all, I would like to give the floor uh, Mr. Hafiz uh, Hassanov, uh, head of the Legal and Development Public Union. There are about 104 counties in the world which include some prohibitions for women to work in some professions. And the cabinet of Minister of Azerbaijan covers uh, these uh, issues. It has a decree number 170, which includes professions prohibited for women because of danger of health or other. We have such list now, and it's uh, almost the same uh, from that period, Soviet time period and if you investigate this list so there are 678 profession fields which is uh, dangerous for women health and which is prohibits their involvement in this i think that uh, azerbaijan list is more it's more than any country in soviet country i think this is part of uh, this from coming from soviet times even in the russian federation these professions are about uh, 450 but in our case, it is 678, which is more richer than other countries. This are includes underground works, works which are dangerous for health. My personal approach is that uh, these this, this restrictions are, should be completely eliminated. So this uh, legislations uh, in entrepreneurship should uh, should uh, cover uh, based on gender principle, without gender discrimination. Why, for example, uh, some uh, poisoned uh, uh, work positions, it should be same for women and men uh, uh, as well. So why we should treat them differently? If, if women have product, product, uh, reproductive health, of course they can have um, implications. So I don't think that there, are need, there is a need for such prohibitions in the world. Uh, and most of countries in the world are escaping from such uh, prohibitions. So I would like to give to the floor the head of the Department of Women Com uh, Children Committee of Azerbaijan. A woman should have right of choice whether he, she can uh, take maternity leave for one year or, or even not, not to, to, to take what maternity leave. Uh, European Union documents also entails this kind of provisions. Because uh, in Azerbaijan, national legislative acts completely contradictory. Uh, with other norms. You don't even have to go to court for uh, to get approval. Reproductive health is a very important issue coming from uh, gender gender equality. So we have to take the issue from two sides as, as a equality between men and women. Uh, unfortunately, when you, we, in our country, when we discuss gender rights, we, we everybody thinks only about women's rights. But what, why don't consider also men's rights? So it should be treated equally. So I, I will like to give this floor to Bakhtiar Mamedov, uh, from Minister of uh, Labor and uh, Social Protection. But later, Azerbaijan joined the European Social Chart. And now Article number 20 of this chart, uh, it says that uh, discrimination against women should be eliminated. And speaker from European Council uh, touched this issue in his report. And uh, it was saying that there are some contradictions between uh, chart provisions and other. other. Uh, as you see, there are some contradictions, even international documents. As a ministry, even starting from 2015, 
So we propose to change uh, Article Number Two Hundred Forty One, and it was reached to the Cabinet of Ministers. So I would like to give the floor to Head of the Representation of USAID in Azerbaijan. Thank you, Vahim Malam. And thank you to our partners, uh, EDF, uh, Sabad Malam, and, uh, and our, my fellow panelists. I think the, the, the issues here are very interesting, and I feel that the, in 2019, we are uh, running in circles talking about these issues. We should be looking more on progress, economic development, and the opportunities women, the diversity that women bring to the workforce that oftentimes men cannot provide. Um, I think the, the, besides changing laws and changing lists, I think these issues also changing attitudes towards uh, women. Um, I think that's where we need to start first, along with the legal system. Um, I have a few remarks I'll make very quickly, and then uh, we can hopefully uh, talk, have a Q&A um, after this. Um, maximizing the women's economic, economic potential, the world's economic potential requires taking full advantage of skills and talents of the entire adult population. Um, and that includes women. And, I mean, I think we keep talking about women. I think we have to talk about human beings first um, and take those distinctions apart and focus on the potential, the human potential that each citizen of this country can bring uh, to, the, to the national security and economic prosperity of the country. I'm here today because I really believe we, can achieve, we cannot achieve equality of economic opportunity for women and men in Azerbaijan if we do not talk about making changes to the list of forbidden professions for women. As Ambassador has said, prohibiting certain professions for women limits their potential to contribute to Azerbaijan's economy. Technological advances and increased safety standards have made jobs a lot safer, less physically demanding for both men and women. Physically and professionally qualified candidates should have equal access to these jobs, regardless of their gender. Um, in, in, uh, in other words, let the best person get the job, regardless of their gender. Um, the U.S. government believes women and men should have the same opportunities to open a business and find employment in all sectors of the economy. Here in Azerbaijan, the U.S. government has helped hundreds of uh, Azerbaijani women gain new skills, start their own businesses, and improve their families' livelihoods. We have a very productive relationship with the Azerbaijani government in this regard, um, including working with the State Committee on Family, Women, and Children's Affairs, Ministry of Labor, Ministry of Economy, Ministry of Agriculture, and Assan Services. USAID's partnership with UNDP and the Azerbaijani government has supported uh, numerous women to open businesses in places like Masali, for example. Two weeks ago, I was in Zakatala with the ambassador, and we gave uh, a number of small grants to women to open up their own businesses. And that you would not think a place like Zakatala, women would want to open up their businesses, but we were surprised about their, their eagerness to do this, which also begs the question, if in Zak places like Zakatala, you have women who want to have their own businesses and participate in the workforce, uh, that there are other places too that also want the same, same um, um, opportunities. So I'm here as a, you know, as a, as representing US, U.S. government, but I think I'm also here as a human being. That this this is a um, an opportunity for us to look at our partnership with Azerbaijan, and and hopefully we can have a um, we can actually help really in diversifying the economy, not just away from the non, from the oil sector, but just diversifying the economy writ large. Um, in this in this uh, this wonderful country where the women actually have so much potential and. Um, I just I'll, I'll end it there, and I'm happy to take questions. Thank you. So, as you can see from the agenda, the second panel called "Existing uh, Prohibited Trades" and discussions uh, regarding elimination of these uh, prohibitions. Shahla Ismail, uh, Chairwoman uh, Regional Development uh, Women Association. So, as you know, uh, there is a campaign in the world, uh, All Jobs for All Women. And first of all, we should be interested about the source of this list. So, which, what is its origin? As you know, it is coming from Soviet times. Uh, it's ap approximately uh, the same in all countries. In some, uh, some countries, as you know, the list was uh, shortened. Ukraine even uh, eliminated this list completely. Um, and when they started to this pass, this also passed from the same uh, road. Uh, uh, so it's mo most important to give the uh, uh, right of selection of education. And secondly, uh, right about marriage. Of course, again, it is a freedom of choice. 
she will decide whether uh, to go married uh, or not, at which age she, she will want to uh, go for marriage. So uh, it is a challenge of freedom. Um, of course, family values are, are important. Uh, it should be regulated by advices of elders, so, but it should be, we should give the uh, girls the uh, right to select, to, to choice, uh, whether I want to uh, stud, uh, study or, or work or at home or in agriculture. I know some women who are, who says I am very satisfied to stay at home, to take care of my family, to take care of my husband. But, uh, but of course, it's the right, uh, it's her right. So. But we cannot uh, force them to obstacle uh, them. You should not work, you should stay at home. So we should give them uh, at least these three uh, freedom of choice, like education, uh, marriage, and uh, work. Uh, I think you will know better Sakina Hanum, who is uh, uh, head of the Women Entrepreneur Association. And she is also uh, manager of manager and owner of very big uh, textile uh, factory in Azerbaijan who was achieved to develop this uh, sector in Azerbaijan. There is not uh, item or equipment that cannot be raised by women. Uh, so why uh, why women should be should stay lower from financial side uh, from than men? Uh, so we think that it is a global tendency. It's a low level of participation in the world countries. Of course, when we uh, talk about uh, prohibited lists uh, for women, it is it's really uh, uh, heartbreaking issue. Uh, why why they cannot solve this problem? Because they see pressure from family, from husband, from mother-in-law, from neighbors. And now I will got to give the floor to Rubaba Hanum, head of the Granite LLC. Women, especially, to create such an organization dealing with explosion is very, uh, very challenging. I, I, I believe that we should not discriminate between men and women. Uh, as, as mentioned by uh, previous speakers, uh, it should, should be fr uh, freedom of choice by a woman. So he, she will decide whether uh, uh, to apply any job, and she will consciously. Uh, think about uh, pros and cons of this any job who, who, who wants to apply. One of the solutions, uh, for example, uh, bring your child to workplace. Uh, we, can, we have to create conditions uh, for women to bring their child to the workplaces. They can show to their children, uh, it is very popular uh, practice in the foreign countries, for me personally, it's my personal opinion, it should be ensured the woman by herself should decide whether he will, she will go to this job or not. But the employer uh, are, is responsible uh, that uh, he, for creation res rel respective conditions uh, to make uh, familiar the woman with speciality sp features of this uh, position. But the right should be free, freedom. I mean, a selection should should be free because it is a matter of image of Azerbaijan. It is a matter of freedom of choice of Azerbaijani women, and we will try. We will do our best to solve this uh, situation.